I want to simulate bacterial evolution in unity, specifically evolution around the idea of chemotaxis, which is the movement of microorganisms towards a target. So what will I need? I'll need a kick-ass obstacle course for the bacteria to roam around, I'll need smart bacteria that can make decisions, and finally, I'll need a system to simulate the evolution of the bacteria. So let's get started. Flagella or singular flagellum are basically these little tails that bacteria evolve to propel themselves around, running away from predators or toxins or running towards food or their prey. Here's the first bacterium with multiple flagella and it can still move in any direction it wants. I wanted the bacteria to be aware of their flagella and choose which ones to turn on and move. Looking at a simpler example, these guys can choose to use this flagella to move this way or this or this. And even at 10 flagella, there will be only 1024 combinations to consider, so this shouldn't be a problem. Each flagellum stats are stored in this flagellum stats data structure, where they have an angle and power. Combined together, they will result in a certain movement which I will store in this custom movement option data structure. The bacterium's goal will be to choose the option that will advance it most towards the goal. Say we have this guy right here. Here it won't go anywhere since there are no good options. Here it will go straight and finally here it will go straight first and then diagonal. The bacteria will also account for their own rotation where it will start moving once there is a possible movement to be made. Now with all this slick movement, it would be a shame to just have an empty field where they can move anywhere they want. So it is time for... How does this bacterium know which way to go to get to the food? It is through Unity's handy NowMesh tool, where you define where your agents can't move, then bake the NowMesh map in, and now the bacteria can just ask the NowMesh what is the next step they should take. In order to have some consistency between generations, I decided to go with a set map, so this will always be the obstacle course. If the bacteria doesn't have a good option to take, they should tumble, which is actually something bacteria do in real life. I wanted to recreate the feel of this tumble, so I actually made them tumble while they were taking this action, where they turned into Schrodinger's bacteria for a moment here. But then I worked through it, and here's the progress so far, with some mutation teasers alongside it. It's time to tackle the main task of this project, the genome. Each attribute of a bacteria will be a gene, designated between a number between 1 and 100. The overall goal is to have a genome where each gene has a clear purpose and a visual indicator. There will be a gene for each flagella. Combined together, they'll allow the bacterium to move in different ways. There will be two genes for bacterium's height and width, and there will be another gene for its density, which will make the bacteria appear shinier. A denser bacteria, combined with its height and width, will have a certain weight, which will make it move slower. Then, we have food detection radius. If they aren't aware of where the food is, they will just randomly explore around. While testing this feature, I realized that if the food is really far away, they all get kinda lost and it's not fun. So from now on, the food smell will travel over time, meaning as time passes, they'll be able to detect food from further away. And finally, we have the stamina gene. A bacteria with more stamina will be able to push harder with the same flagella. Higher stamina will appear as these additional organelles coming off of it. Maybe we can think of them like mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Each gene will be able to mutate based on the mutation chance, and they can at most change as much as the value calculated by the mutation size, which are both parameters the player can set. Moving on from generation to generation, I want the bacteria that perform the best to spread their genes to the next one. I need to explain one thing first. The bacteria move in a turn-based system. Every turn, they decide whether they should move towards the food or tumble and recalibrate their angle or just randomly explore. This way, if I want to move through the simulation quickly, I can increase the turn speed and still precisely keep track of their performance in a number of turns taken basis. With all the functionalities in place, I started testing out the simulation. That is when I realized some bacteria would get stuck for a very long time. As it turns out, it was because I was ordering them to just pass if they can't move anywhere while exploring. So I instead just told them to tumble in those situations. Now it was time to face the music and ask myself the toughest question any software developer will have to ask themselves. Is my code shit? I was measuring the amount of turns the bacteria had to use to reach the food. Per unit of distance, the food was away from the center. This measurement seemed to be improving, but like, not really. So I went back to the source, because as someone who spent hours on Boxcar 2D, I knew it always improved over time. They actually had an explanation in the FAQ section. I feel so stupid. I straight up forgot to implement this. I just kept copying the top performers over and randomly mutating the rest. Why would the population get any better? I mean, the elites were getting better, but not the rest of the flock. With this revelation, here's how I changed the evolution system. The top two performers each generation will make. Which doesn't really make sense, since in reality bacteria reproduce asexually through mitosis. 
But anyways, when they mate, their genomes will be randomly mixed and then they will mutate based on the simulation's parameters. Now as you can see, now once we move on from one generation to the next, they all look similar, like the top performers babies, which is exactly what I wanted. Let's see how the simulation will progress now. Okay wait, stop 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 stop. Th this is just sad. Just slapping the numbers next to each other, leaving the viewer to constantly try to calculate what the trend looks like. I mean, what happens in the long run? What will happen after 50 generations? Or 100? If only there was a way for us humans to display information in a beautiful and concise way. I basically spent my whole weekend trying to wrap up this project. And to be honest, I didn't even really need to add this. But this should be a quick little addition, right? Uh, <coughs> Right, well, I love you, Mr. Code Monkey, but I am way too lazy to watch all these videos. So let's try this. And it's not working. Well, now it's 11 p.m. on a Sunday night, and the graph is working. As you can see, as I add larger data points, every other one gets shifted to fit them all together in the area. Here's how it looks like during the simulation. And then I added some lines to connect the data points. Then I started tracking the average so far, since there were some odd generations that performed very poorly. I thought it would be better to look at the long term trend. And finally, I decided to hide the data points anyways to achieve a cleaner look. While testing the new graphs, I thought the UI was incorrectly rounding mutation parameters from 0.2 or 0.4 to 0. But no, they were actually set to 0. You know what this means? There were no mutations happening, just a recreation of the elites again and again. So here's an example test run with actually 20% mutation rate and size. You can see how there were a lot of variety, but it looked like the average time was getting better over time slowly. But then towards the end, it really shit the bed. But this is just one run, so it's too early to say anything. This is another example run with 50% mutation rate and size. And as you can see, there were a lot more up and down from generation to generation, which is what is expected with the larger parameters. I have a lot of ideas around expanding this project, like adding competition between different kinds of bacteria, or adding other microbes such as viruses, and overall expanding this simulation to the scale of a whole ecosystem. But that would be a really large project, and I want to make sure that this is something you guys would want to watch. So let's say if this video gets 10,000 likes, I will make a part 2, as well as releasing the simulation as a free web project so everyone can play with it. Here is the final trial run with high mutation chance, low mutation size, and a high number of elite clones. My goal here was to keep the good performers exactly the same and mutate the bad ones, since if you have realized, so far in every generation, it is the last few bacteria that took forever to reach the food. Overall, almost all generations' performances were below the average, which meant that it was constantly improving, albeit slowly. And if that is not the story of life, I don't know what is. Thanks for watching.